This is Twit. 20 years ago today, Steve Jobs taught the band to play, put a thousand, a thousand songs in our pocket. And Connie, you were at that event. I was. It was a, it was a notable day, not just because Steve Jobs was really good at doing presentations and keeping the audience enthralled, but because it was such a big risk for Apple. At the time, it was primarily known as the maker of the Macintosh. And it was 2001, so Jobs had been back five years, and they were still, you know, in financial struggles. They had had the new candy-colored iMacs before, but they still, you know, weren't you know, solvent, I would say. They, they were still struggling to make money. So for them to take a risk on the consumer electronics market was a big move. And um, Jobs started out his pitch that day with an, an emotional appeal, which was everybody's into music. This is a market that's never going to go away. People love music. We love music. And you should do what you love. And he really did a good job of keeping the audience you know, following along with him and his logic, um, there were other music players on the market. Apple is typically not the first into a new space, but he sold them on how it was going to be. Apple was going to make it elegant and easy and really fast to upload music um, to this, you know, very cool looking device. I mean, I have to admit, this is my original iPod I got it that day. I it's in pretty good shape, not because Apple gave away a case. I actually asked Jobs about that. Uh, I said, have you have you thought about making cases? And he said, what for? It fits in your pocket. And I was wearing a skirt with no pockets. And I'm like, because some of us carry stuff in our bags. So I went home and I sewed my own little case. I found oh, it. Oh, it. it's a little cow. <laughs> it's a gateway with, case. With, uh, <laughs> with yarn from my kids, uh, you know, play thing. And that's what's kept this thing in pristine condition. But wow. it was a notable moment. Like I said, it was a risk. It, did, it took a while for the iPod to be a success. I don't think people realized that. It was not an instant hit. They, it, it took them four or five years to really sell in the millions of devices. But by then, um, they'd introduced the iTunes store and had taken on the music labels, as all of us recall. It was one of Steve Jobs' famous open letters to the industry and talking about why you should be able to buy songs individually rather than buying a whole CD. And uh, it was just cool, right? The silhouette ads, they had a U2 iPod. Uh, Bono was there for the launch of that. I actually got to meet Bono on the edge Whoa, on that cool. day. Very cool, and there was a lot of there was a lot of good marketing hype, and of course, a thousand songs in your pocket was quite a great tagline. So it was. It was we start. still remember it, and of course, it's <laughs> like trivial to put a thousand songs in your pocket now. What is right. on your uh, What is on your uh, iPod? Is do you have the original music still on there? I do. Uh, Jobs gave away twenty albums, and so everybody in the audience oh. had to go home with a shopping bag with all the CDs. Otherwise, it would have been music piracy, right? There's oh, no you're kidding! To get them, so I have all twenty, and I wrote a story about it on CNET. You can see a photo, but um, there were a couple of Beatles, "Hard Day's Night," "Abbey Road." There was two Simon and Garfunkel. This is Steve Jobs' playlist, and so CNET put together a Spotify playlist if you want to hear it all. Uh, Yo Yo Ma, Glenn Gould, BB King. Uh, of course, Bob Dylan, who, you know, Jobs is into Dylan. Um, just uh, Sarah McLaughlin um, was the first bit of music played. And I, the thing that I remember about that event, aside from people going, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and they had FireWire, which was their fast file transfer standard. I still have the FireWire uh, cable. Yeah, you and I both, in order to charge it, <laughs> we had to find yes, a FireWire. Yes, FireWire. And the FireWire um, official Apple FireWire charging brick <laughs> wow um it was fast watching him load uh, music off of his he had a mac uh you know computer on you had the to stage connect and it, then he, you had to rip he, the cds and then into itunes and then you had to connect it to your computer and correct. then you had to copy it over synchronize right. it over and it was carefully done so that you couldn't easily steal the songs later but it was also auto sync, which was very cool. Right. You could rip a lot of music, and if you, you know, if you ripped ten CDs on Tuesday, and then you went back on Friday and you ripped others, it it knew that, um, you know, what to sync up was, which is something that we take for granted now. But that was a big deal in those days, honestly. And 
Yeah, it was the start of Apple moving into this consumer electronic space. And it was cemented in 2007, obviously, when they introduced the iPhone. A lot of people don't uh, maybe not remember this, but on the day they introduced the iPhone, we've had the iPod and all the iterations. The iPhone kind of subsumes uh, the iPod, right? Because the iPhone is a phone and it's a music player as well. And that was the day they, that Jobs changed the name of the company from Apple Computer Inc. to Apple Inc. In recognition oh, that, that was no when that happened? Computer company. Oh. Yeah, on the day they introduced the iPhone, not the iPod. Oh, yeah, the iPhone, yeah. Yeah, so it was the start of that whole path. And of sure. course, two trillion dollar valuation later, it was obviously the right was the right call. Yeah, this was uh, before the iPhone. This was the most successful consumer product of all time, I think. I mean, it really was dominant. I, you know, I have one story that I want to tell, and that is, and no disrespect to Microsoft here, but at some point, I you know was speaking at an event, and someone gave me a Zune, <laughs> and. Uh, I still have the Zoom. It still powers up. But uh, I came home and I had two kids and I gave my daughter, you know, this oh, iPod no. to use. And I gave my son the Zoom. And did he and say, he, why I, do you hate me, mom? <laughs> he did. Do you love, do you love Laura better than you love me? <laughs> so. You can have a Zoom. Of course, we had to, <laughs> it's we had to get him an, we got him an iPod after yeah. that. So yeah. a shuffle, by the way, that, that was the years of the iPod oh, shuffle, yeah. even smaller with more capacity. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. How many iPods? I mean, we all have owned probably most of them. I even bought my sister the U2, the black and red U2 iPod. It was loaded with U2 albums. Come to think of it, there's been a long heritage of, of love between Apple and Bono for some reason. I'm not sure I really understand that. Uh, well, it, who, it wasn't just the U2. Bono? Everybody loves Bono. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just the U2 uh, iPod. It was the first time that Bono and U2 had licensed their music digitally. Right, they own, big deal. Unlike a lot of musicians, oh, they own their catalog. Right. So that's why it was a big deal. That was a big deal, getting them to say, okay, you can sell it digitally. Remember, the, right. God, people, for, it's moved so fast. You forget, bands did not allow digital copies of their music. They were terrified. By the whole thing, Napster boy, yeah. line wire. <laughs> yeah, this was Good old the days. other thing that uh, is. I mean, this was a uh, early MP3 player. <laughs> this was for a car, obviously. But this what, has a was that a, di a, 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 a laser disc? Was that eight? It had a hard, had a hard <laughs> drive in it. This oh, is a Rio. That's a Rio. This is a Rio, exactly. Yeah. And I had the little small portable Rio as well, the Diamond Rio that was uh, predated the iPod. But the thing that all of these did wrong. We even did many shows on the screensavers about building your own. Put a computer in your trunk <laughs> and have MP3s on a hard drive. But the thing that was hard about all these is navigation. It was miserable. Finding your music and playing it was miserable. And it was a really in, a brilliant uh, insight. Tony Fidel came up with the designer of the iPod to have that, that click wheel. These actually are, are sold. They actually turn. Um, but they, they held up. That I'm click sound is one of the one of the things you could just like play and you know oh, like people the know AOL it. dial up you know yeah, exactly what people know is. it yeah uh, a lot of Britney Spears on this one um, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it must have been my daughter's <laughs> <laughs> or she was the last one to have it I I'm gonna she defend to I'm gonna defend it. the Zoom the first Brown Zoom not great but at the end of the Zoom the Zoom HD was actually a really good music device and I was kind of sad that Microsoft having finally perfected that device gave up on by the time yeah. by the time i was going to say by the time it got good they were already they had already lost yeah that so, i guess that's yeah. what it was you couldn't there it was too much headwind yeah it's funny there's there's actually a huge following if you go check out reddit there's a huge following people still love that device the hd the hd yeah yeah i think that was uh in every respect it was kind of the windows phone of music players because it had a great interface, it had a big screen, it it was kind of in every way superior to the competition. But too late, it was too late, just like the Windows Phone. It was it was it was over, you know. Uh, I was kind of sad about that. It was shortly after Microsoft gave up its music. You could used to be able to buy music from Microsoft and and all of that, and they gave up all of that. Tw hard to believe, twenty years ago. And and does your son still think you like your daughter better? 
<laughs> no, he has. Uh, we've bought him iPhones. So, yeah, uh, yeah, he's, he's okay now. He's, <laughs> okay he's been now. redeemed. He's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs>